Five bells. Stand by all stations. Attention. All districts. A five alarm fire. Five bells move in immediately. That's it. Let's go. Let's go. Firefighters. <laughs> Fighters, the true to life story of our unsung heroes who stand ready to ride by day or night against our most murderous enemy, the demon of fire. In just a moment, we'll join Chief Cody and rookie fireman Tim Collins in the old Wilcox mansion, where Tim's young brother and sister, Jimmy and Trudy, had come earlier to ask for a donation for the antique sale, which the junior firefighters planned to hold. The fire, which had broken out in the attic closet almost immediately after the youngsters left, has quickly and easily been put out. But it brought Jimmy and Trudy face to face with a very serious charge, for Mrs. Wilcox accuses them of setting it. Before we see what happens next, here's an important message for all of you. Let's go, firefighters. Let's join Jimmy and Trudy Collins in the gloomy old attic at the Wilcox Mansion, which had seemed so scary when they had been there alone with old Mrs. Wilcox shortly before the fire broke out. It is still cluttered with trunks, furniture, and clothing of a bygone era, but now one end, where the closet had been, is blackened and charred. Chief Cody stands before it with a lamp held high, causing Mrs. Wilcox's shadow to stretch back toward the children who huddle close to their brother Tim. A quick look around, a few sharp questions, and then Chief Cody says, Well, Mrs. Wilcox, I don't think you'd believe me if I explained what happened. I think it might be wiser to show you who set that fire. But we didn't do it on us, Chief Cody. I never for a minute believed you did, Jimmy. I didn't set it. I'll swear to that. And then if it wasn't Mrs. Wilcox, it must have been the gully. Oh, now, Trudy, you know better than that. Oh, but Tim, this is a haunted house. Everybody says so. Well, that's ridiculous, sis. You know that. I know, Tim. Trudy's closer than any of us to the truth. You couldn't say this fire was set by an actual person. And there would, wouldn't even have been a fire if this wasn't a haunted house. These children must have set it, Chief Cody. And if you think you can protect them with nonsense like that... Nonsense, you call it, Mrs. Wilcox? Tell me, why did Jimmy and Trudy come here? Why, to ask me if I had some old things stored away that I'd uh, give them for their antique sale. You were awful nice to give us that old cup and saucer and that snuff box thing, Mrs. Wilcox. That's why we don't see how you can be so mean to think we set your house on fire. Isn't that right, Jimmy? Now, now, you kids let me have the floor a minute. Jimmy's closing this attic off. He's breaking that skylight while Trudy was sending in the alarm. Probably saved your house. My uh, haunted house, Chief Cody? Yes, yes. To put it bluntly, any house that's allowed to become a fire hazard like this has is haunted, Mrs. Wilcox. It's haunted by the possibility of fire day in and day out. Oh, ridiculous. I told you how careful I am. Fires don't start of their own accord. And anyway, the fire started in the closet. The lamp was on the floor outside it. Don't you think I know enough to keep it away from any of those clothes that might have been hanging above it? Well, I... I suppose so. Oh, gee, Chief, I give up. Me too. What happened, Chief? Tim, you had my permission to stay on after the rescue company left. But I believe the engine and hook and ladder companies haven't finished securing. Oh, uh, that's right, sir. All right. Well, tell them to stand by a few minutes longer. Oh, if they've still got a line up on the roof, keep it there. Oh, uh, yes, sir. They finished wetting down the shingles just as we came up here, Chief. Anything else? Yes. Round up a couple of chemical extinguishers and any rookies like yourself who could profit by a lesson in fire prevention. Uh, get them up here, huh? Uh, right, sir. There's just one other thing. Yes, I know, son. Phone your mother. Tell her the kids are safe and sound. Yes, sir. Tell her Chief Cody says he'll have them home in time for dinner. A few minutes later, Jimmy and Trudy are sitting uneasily on a trunk at the opposite end of the long attic from where the fire had been. The lamp on a high box nearby provides a dim pool of light, but beyond it, the room is dark and shadowy. I wish they hadn't left us alone, Jimmy. Oh, gee whiz, what are you scared of, Trudy? 
Chief Cody and Mrs. Wilcox will be back in a minute. I think he had something to tell her he didn't want us to hear. He thinks that didn't want to frighten us? No, I bet she's going to warn her against accusing people of setting fires. She ought to be more careful. But she didn't set it herself, Jimmy. Not really, I mean. Well, she didn't, she didn't, if you ask me. That's a funny thing to say. Well, I figure she did something without knowing it, Judy. And stop looking over your shoulder like that. You make me nervous. But even Chief Cody said this is a haunted house, and, and that it was true about, well, the ghost. He didn't mean it like it sounded. You know how grown-ups talk sometimes. Maybe. At least I knew what he was going to do. Well, we'll soon find out. Here he comes with Mrs. Wilcox. Yeah. And there's Tim and some of the other firemen. Uh, Mrs. Wilcox has given me her permission to try a little experiment. I'd feel kind of guilty about it, but, well, she's made certain serious charges about a couple of young friends of mine. But you haven't yet disproved, Chief Cody. I will, although you're forcing me into doing it in a way I don't exactly approve of. Is this going to be dangerous in some way, Chief? It would be for the average person, Tim. But we've got every factor under control. I'm taking no chances. Look, Trudy, that closet the chief's opening is just like the one at the other end of the attic. Uh -huh. That's right, Jimmy. If you look carefully, you'll see this end of the room is exactly like the other in every detail. Oh, I get it, Chief. You can duplicate exactly what happened at the other end before the fire. Even to taking a look at some of the things Mrs. Wilcox has stored in here, Tim. Now, these clothes I'm taking out of the closet, for instance. <coughs> oh, gosh, it those clothes. It's just like before, Jimmy. Here, you take one pile of these dresses and things, Jimmy. You take another, Trudy. And uh, now both of you move back oh, now. Oh, Chief Knight, nice. is it necessary to take all those clothes out of my closet? <laughs> You'll thank me for it in a minute. <coughs> this dust is terrible, Chief. Don't you think we should open a window? Now, we'll get to that. You just stand by with that extinguisher, son. All right, now the dust has settled down enough so you can move that lamp to the exact spot it was in, Mrs. Wilcox. This seems pretty childish to me. Even you can't make a fire appear out of nowhere, Chief Cody. I'm not going to. You're forgetting this is the opposite end of the attic, Mrs. Wilcox. That lamp was on the floor on the other side of the closet. Oh, yes, so it was. <clears throat> but it was just outside it. Don't forget. Even if you hadn't taken those clothes out, the lamp isn't near enough to set them on fire. I agree. <laughs> the important thing is that it was between the closet and the window. Plus which, I think your lamp was a bit closer to the open closet than you have it now. Well, perhaps it was. There. Mm. Now it's exactly like it was when it blazed up before. And and may I point out, nothing has happened. You haven't yet duplicated everything you did. Uh, will you go over and open that window now? Well, certainly. I agree with Mr. Collins. We could stand a little air in here. There we are, the nice breeze. <gasps> hey, what? hey, the closet's on fire. Tim, do something. Put it out. Oh, help, my house is on fire. Okay, Tim. Move in with your extinguisher. Yes, sir. Maybe Mrs. Wilcox is convinced now. A uh, little more to this side, Jim. Yes, sir. All right, there. That's got it. <laughs> it's out before it started, Mrs. Wilcox. You can relax. Wow. Relax? Why, of all things. Fires can sometimes start out of nowhere, you see, if you provide all the factors they need. Yes, sir. Dust combustion. So that was the answer, Chief. Well, I still don't understand what happened. I wouldn't believe it if, it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. Well, that's why I had to go to extremes. It was the only way to teach you a needed lesson, Mrs. Wilcox. Dust particles suspended in the air are not hard to ignite. Certain kinds of dust are downright explosive. But I... It's bad enough here in the room. Just think of the heavy dust cobwebs in that closet. Why, it's saturated. Yeah, and when she opened the window, Chief, the lamp was close enough so the invisible heat from the chimney blew in. Yeah, you could see it flare up for a second, too. The whole thing happens in a flash. And think of that dust being ignited in a closet full of clothes, Mrs. Wilson. Oh, I, I, I'd rather not. I, I'd rather not think of how I've acted either. Oh, Jimmy and Trudy, I don't know what to say. Oh, well, that's all right. We're sorry it ever happened. Oh, but to lose my head like I did... To accuse you both. Well, you just forget it now, Mrs. Wilcox. Oh. Maybe I can get some of the junior firefighters over here to help you clean up your house so oh, it'll be safer. Jimmy, you make me feel ashamed of myself. But I promise you we'll find lots of things that you can have for that antique sale of yours. If you'll just forget the way I acted and the things I said. Oh, he'll forget, all right. He did a good job tonight. I think he's earned a surprise that'll 
keep his mind on something else tomorrow. Yeah? What is it, Chief? Do you know, Tim? Uh, I sure do. I sure do, because I'm in on it, too. Oh, gosh. Tell me what it is, huh? Well, then it wouldn't be a surprise, Jimmy. <laughs> now, how would you and Trudy like a ride home in the Chief's car? Huh? Well, I would. I'm getting awful hungry. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a woman for you. Uh, uh, All right, give me your hand, young lady. All right, the rest of you secure, and then let's roll. But for once, Jimmy's mind is not on the excitement and noise of securing. As the trucks pull away, he's trying mighty hard to figure out what Chief Cody has in mind for him. Now, if you're as anxious as Jimmy is, be sure to listen to the next exciting episode of The Firefighters. In a moment, Chief Cody will be back with a word for you boys and girls. But first, a special message. Now here's Fire Chief Bob Cody with a very special notice for the Firefighters Brigade. Chief Cody. This is Chief Cody back again, boys and girls. Firefighters' attention. After what happened in the old Wilcox mansion, I shouldn't have to say this, but I can't repeat it too often. Never poke around in dusty closets with a lamp, a candle, or lighted matches. Dust is inflammable. Now, if there's not enough light in the room, use a flashlight. Now, let me repeat once more. Never poke around in dusty closets with a lamp, a candle, or lighted matches. Well, that is all. Until next time, this is Chief Bob Cody saying so long. Fire Chief Cody and the young rookie fireman Tim Collins will be back on this same station the next time you'll hear... That's it. Let's... Oh! Let's go! Firefighters! Firefighters is a copyrighted feature of William F. Holland Productions.